So many of us fear our inevitable death. But what would happen if you could live forever? Another grim day for the United States as the national debt piles up to $500 trillion. When asked about the solution to the problem, President Skibi shared these thoughts. He said, quote, It doesn't matter anyway. Nobody can kill us for it. Ever since the creation of the Pill of Immortality in 2111, conflicts have ceased to happen all over the world. At least it is true that we may never see another war again. You turn off the radio in frustration. Ever since you took the pill of immortality, your life has been nothing but endless agony. You thought it would be a good idea to take the pill. In fact, we all did. What could have possibly been the downside? No matter if you were run over, got a third degree burn, or didn't eat or drink water for an entire year, you'd still live. Nobody would have to experience pain anymore. No more famines. No more reason to fight with other countries. It seemed like a no-brainer. But paradoxically, never being able to experience pain anymore has put you in more pain than anything could have before you took the pill. According to your calendar, you are now 255 years old, but you stopped aging physically ever since you took the pill at age 25. Some people weren't as lucky to have the pill come out during their youth, and so they're stuck in an elderly body for the rest of their lives. But most people over the age of 65 decided to not take the pill and are all dead, so you don't see many physically old people these days anyway. You're on your way to your friend's house for the fifth time this week, because every moment you spend in silence in your apartment reminds you of your irreversible immortality. Ever since the pill was created, work ceased to have meaning for most people, and all important labor had been replaced by robots. The only people that decided to partake in work were, as you had put it one day, people who were deluding themselves into thinking there was any reason to work since everything was meaningless now. When you arrive at your friend David's house, you ask him what he wants to do today. He scratches his head, then pulls out his iPhone 243 Pro. As the holographic screen shines out in front of both of you, he starts to scroll through the list called Things I Still Haven't Seen or Experienced as an Immortal Human. After passing through over 3,000 already checked off bullet points, he finally gets to a newly added option, Explore the Deep Sea. This one might actually be cool, David said. The fish down there are one of the only few species of animals still alive, ever since the world became too overpopulated and we had to live in an 80% artificially created environment. David's statement quickly made you have flashbacks to the first time it was announced that there would be a ban on reproduction. When the pill was first released to the public, the masses ran towards it without hesitation. After a couple of years of no one dying and people endlessly reproducing, the rate at which children were being born greatly surpassed the surface area that could allow human beings to have at least some space in between each other's living areas. And so, it was announced that reproduction was banned indefinitely. Anyone who chose to defy the government would be sentenced to life in prison in one of the 100 gargantuan maximum security prisons situated in the world, where they would spend the rest of their infinite life isolated for eternity. Before the pill, you had a lovely girlfriend whom you had planned on marrying and starting a family with. But after you both took it, you quickly began to realize that the love you had for each other was based on the fact that you knew you would eventually lose each other one day, and an eternity spent with the same person who you now couldn't even reproduce with was one with far less meaning than a relationship with eventual mortality. You cannot truly love something that you'll never lose, and so too was the same for your own life. After snapping out of your unintentional days, you hear David calling out your name. Thought I'd lost you for a second, man. Although, that's not even possible. <laughs> Anyways, the tour looks pretty cool. They just built these automatic deep sea submarines that guide you through the absolute darkness. Those creepy ass anglerfish I was telling you about are down there. Man, I haven't felt this much excitement since I knew I would die one day. Let's do it, man, come on. After some hesitation and a shrug, you agreed to go. Maybe you too would get excited once you got down there, since you had already seen every single part of the surface level world. After you took the new and improved steel plated bullet train that catapulted you to the other side of the country in 30 seconds and stepped off the train, you found yourself in an underground cave with transparent glass that surrounded you on all sides, located in the deepest part of the ocean, the Mariana Trench. 
you were now completely submerged underwater. The blueness of the water was the only light source down there, and gave everyone's skin a light blue tint, like you had all just swallowed a blue candy from Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. It was a small walk to the submarine entrance, and in that small walk, you didn't see one fish pass by the glass. But you knew you wouldn't, since every fish above the deep sea had already been killed by all the unnatural environmental changes, and the mass overproduction of equipment caused irreversible sea pollution. You made your way to the submarine and sat down in your designated seat. It took off and started its descent into the deep sea, and slowly the lights in the submarine automatically turned themselves on. When you finally got to around 5,000 meters below sea level, the lights located on the outside of the submarine turned on, and a pre-programmed AI that mimicked a human face appeared and started talking about the different types of species of fish you were seeing through the submarine windows. After a couple minutes, you found yourself slowly drifting away into thought and drowning out the robot's voice completely, reminiscing on the times before you had taken that pill, and the deep-seated remorse you felt for that decision started to present itself at the forefront of your mind once again. Before you could completely throw yourself into an apathetic spiral, David hit your shoulder a few times and said, Dude, look how creepy that one is. You wondered how David could be fascinated by anything at all anymore. But David's small hope in the world was one of the only reasons you felt anything anymore. He was a really great friend. After the tour and making your way back to your friend's house, you decided you were going to go home and take a nap, and you said your goodbyes. But that goodbye, like every other one, was meaningless, because you knew you could say goodbye without having to worry if this goodbye would finally be your last. As you got home and slipped off your shoes, the silence from being completely alone, with nothing but your thoughts, became deafening, and the despair and reality of your immortality became abundantly apparent once again. Knowing you probably wouldn't be able to fall asleep due to this, you decided to browse the internet for a while. As you looked through all the different social media apps, every headline and post was promoting the same story. Three scientists from Finland had finally found a way to reverse the immortality pill and allow aging and death to happen as they did before. And the injection to reverse the immortality pill was going to be available to the public in as little as a week. You were absolutely elated, along with the rest of the online world. After 255 years on this earth, you finally had the choice to die. For the next week, you slept like a baby, thinking of all the ways and lifetimes which you had lived, and how it would all finally be coming to an end. And when it was available to the public, you got that injection. But instead of immediately trying to die like most people ended up doing who had lived as long as you, you decided to continue onward in your life and let yourself die when the time came, of natural causes. Because you wanted to feel what it was like to grow old, and have the true experience of life just like you did the first 25 years of your life. You tried all the different foods of the world now that eating was a necessity again. You reignited your passions and interests and had a reason to grow better in them. And all the confidence and meaning you found within your everyday tasks eventually led you to pursue another girlfriend, which you later ended up marrying. This continued on until you reached the old physical age of 70, when you felt your time was coming to an end soon. During those past 45 years of aging, the immortality pill was still made available to the public for free, and many naive young people opted for it because they could not overcome their innate need to survive for as long as possible. So, in an effort to leave a positive impact and legacy behind, and prevent anyone else from going through the indefinite torture of immortality you experienced, you decided to use your massive audience you accumulated online over the past couple decades to help you promote an article you are about to write titled, In Defense of Death. And this is what you wrote. 300 years on this earth, in a human body, has taught me many things. I've seen technology advance from robots who can deliver packages to you in under two hours, to robots that are indistinguishable from humans themselves. But what even makes something alive and human? Is it the ability to be self-aware? Is it the formation of the frontal cortex? Is it the way we can communicate, or the way our heart beats? While those are all seemingly important factors, perhaps the most significant one is the fact that you have an unknown expiration date. When you're young, you'll do everything to avoid this fact. You'll involve yourself in all types of trivial manners, like a simple argument with a coworker, or the fact that you got rejected by your crush, or you'll beat yourself up for not getting the job you wanted, not realizing that all of these things are completely insignificant. 
But you don't realize that because you don't keep death in the back of your mind at all times. You'll waste lots of your time doing everything to please others and you'll live a life that isn't true to who you are. Instead of knowing you can do or choose whatever path it is that you want in this life, you'll take the easy route. The one that causes the least amount of risk or pain. I know this because I too did this when I was a kid. But it was all amplified tenfold when I took the pill. After I took that pill, I ceased to be alive. Because one cannot truly be alive if one cannot die. Suddenly, my entire world turned gray. If I wanted to accomplish something, I knew I could no matter what, because I knew I had all the time in the world to. And so, I didn't accomplish anything. The value of my relationships and work went to zero, because I knew I'd never lose these moments or experiences with others, and I could easily recreate them when I felt like it. I no longer felt any love or hate towards anything, but rather pure indifference. The only thing that produced any emotion out of me was negative, and that was my own immortality. Before immortality was an option, I'd ask myself, why do anything if we all die? But the question I really should have asked was, why do anything if you live forever? The fact that our time on Earth is limited is the very thing that makes anything worth doing at all. The fact that this sensory experience, which produces all different kinds of people, places, nature, sounds, and smells, will eventually perish makes life the most beautiful journey you will ever have the opportunity to take part in. Because your metaphorical hourglass will one day reach its last grain of sand, you can brave the unknown without remorse, you can tackle the career you want to see yourself in, and you can have the rigor and vitality to explore everything this world has to offer, no matter what the potential consequences are. If you don't die one day, then what's the point of any of that? Scarcity is what adds value to an object, and if you decide to take that pill, the object of life and what you do with it will have no value whatsoever. Accept your fate. Accept that the minute you were born, you took a risk. It's impossible to half-ass anything when you understand that being alive is the biggest risk of all, and you always keep death in your mind with every thought and action you partake in. And when you willingly accept and face your fear of mortality, You'll hug your friends a little tighter. You'll stop worrying over the insignificant daily tasks and failures that cloud your judgment. You'll go after what you want, and you will unapologetically allow yourself to take in and appreciate any experience that this limited time vessel in which you encapsulate finds itself experiencing. Because one day, you won't have the opportunity to do any of that. So before you take that pill, consider this. The experience of living forever without any possible risks is truly the scariest experience of them all. Thank you very much to all my patrons who are helping to support this channel on Patreon. If you don't know what this is, it's a platform separate from YouTube where I'm putting out exclusive content you can't find anywhere else. Plus, you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one over the phone on there. If you want to check that out, link in the description. Now, if you enjoy the fictional storytelling videos like this that help inspire you to continue living and doing what you want, check out this video. It will really help you a lot. That is all for me in this video. I hope you enjoyed the story. And I'm signing out. Peace.